Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are at Hawes Station. This place you're looking at was built in the 1850s to serve the immigrants. They didn't want to take the Carson River route because there, it was Nero's, the river was raging. It was kind of a rough terrain. But if you were to avoid the Carson River route, you could instead take this route here, which is considered the loneliest road in America that you see along here. Yep, the loneliest road in America. There's a plaque right here, and it says Carson Trail. Past some curious dry sinks, level as water, solid as marble, went down a stony and steep hill to the river. This is a historical spot. This is also BLM land, and it's very rough. We had to go through a lot of rocky land to get here, but this is this is worth seeing. Just to, just to visit. Just to see the station itself. I just want to say peace. It's the holiday season, so Lord Rick Klaus is out. But anyways, it was a stage station. And it served the Overland Mail and Stage Route. This is all Pony Express territory. The Overland was, you know, a little, was much like the Pony Express. And of course... At the time, Bert Hawes was the owner, hence why it's called Hawes. According to the Historical Society in 1911, this did not have a post office, did not have a newspaper. You can see straight ahead, here's a bunch of sand. And if you really want to get technical, you can see the railroad tracks that run through here. So the train used to pass by. Many trains used to pass by on a daily basis. So what we're going to do, there's another station called Williams Station where a lot of men died in an Indian raid. Sometimes it's underwater, sometimes it's not. If I can get to it, I'll go check it out. If I can't, I can't. But we'll do a little preliminary investigation here. I'll take some photos and then we'll be on our way. We got four ghost towns planned, a wildlife refuge. It's going to be quite the day today. This is Lord Rick of the Paranormal and Ghost Society bringing you Hawes Station. It may not be much, but it's history. And of course, we can, you can see a lot of the crumbling stones, but you can walk in it and you can see some of the walls are still intact Churchill County which we're in has about I don't know I'd say about 10 to 20 different Pony Express Overland stations and some of these stations had you know some of them also had other services like they might build a saloon and maybe a small little hotel and Maybe a post office next door. Look, there's more foundations right there. So you can see it's a, you know, they might even have at the station, the caretakers would stay here. But, you know, this might be like, this might be the station where the mail was operated from. And this might be where the caretaker lived, which was Hawes. A lot of broken beer, beer bottles. Yeah, this is what I suspected. This is also a foundation right here. Now I have another station I'm going to take you guys to maybe next month. Amazing. Some of the stone buildings of the station are completely intact from top to bottom. More foundations. One other thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look real careful. Basalt and other forms of volcanic rock are available this is why the station was built look at the hillside there's enough native rock for almost a mile you could build probably about 30 of these structures easily but you can see if you look 
Look at all that rock. Thousands of rocks. That's why the station was built here. So we're about to head out of here. We're going to go to William Station. In the 1800s, the Paiute Indians invaded it, killing. But they burnt it down. They shot arrows. They killed a bunch of men. I guess one of the men at the station or two of the men had raped one or two of the Native American women from the village. And the Indians, they waited below the station. And... I guess once nightfall came in, the Indians fully invaded, full out of salt. The station was rebuilt. Sometimes it's under Lake Lahontan, sometimes it's exposed. If it's exposed, I'll go out there and I'll bring you guys a story on it and do an investigation with my EMF and recorder. But otherwise, this rough road we take back, it actually crosses the railroad tracks up ahead. And uh, we'll... Lahatan's just on the other side of those mountains. And uh, what once was a sea is now a little, practically a pond. It's dwindling, low on water. And if you really want to get an idea of how secluded we're at, take a look at the snowy mountains off in the distance. It's, you know, it's just, I mean, you can see for 50, 100 miles out in northern Nevada couple hundred miles if you're on a peak and so this is what it's really about it's just that back country and exploring the ghost towns we got four ghost towns one more station a mine and a wildlife area so we got a busy day it's time to jet out of here we're leaving Hawes station we're going to Williams station I don't know if the water will be low enough if it's not we move on to our next place that's all we have plenty of places. Wait till you see Thompson Smelter and Ludwig and Hudson and Nordyke. This is the this is the road out here. Yeah, lots of big rocks to run over. I hate rocky roads, but that's part of the backcountry. Some roads are smooth, some you don't bring your mom's Buick on. Here's where things get rough. This is where we tip sideways. I think I got it. That's the hardest part right there that I just went through. But now, now that we're leaving, I just, you know, I wanted to film the way out just to kind of show you guys how how quickly it gets remote and how backcountry it becomes in a matter of minutes. And I don't think people realize this. This is part of BLM land. So, you know, you could take this land and off-road. There's hundreds of roads. I mean, there's thousands of roads back here that you could take. But this one leaves the Hawes Station. This is the main road in the Hawes Station. Back then, these old wagon roads used to supply the Pony Express and the Overland route with mail station to station deliveries were made it's some pretty rough terrain but back then the gentlemen took horses so you know the horses never cared about big rocks or rocky paths we're going to be crossing the tracks right up here I mean this is what connected the railroad from the east coast to the west coast these tracks go up into the Sierras eventually. But you have to stop and you have to look. See we have, there's a little pond over there. But you can see, you can see through the window, the gray cuts right through the rock. There's nothing coming so we're safe to cross. Just be careful when you go across these tracks. These are very busy tracks. And yes, you can die. We're heading on the loneliest road of America. I'm going to cut this film out. I will see you at William Station. If we don't succeed there, our, we'll be at the ghost town and of Thompson Smelter, which had 350 residents. It also had tents and cabins and 
different things like a saloon, maybe a small schoolhouse. That ever all the men went to the smelter to work. I mean, it employed hundreds of men, and you know they would process the minerals from the mines and load it up onto the Copper Belt Railway. A lot of history. The smelter looks like a Roman temple. There must be hundreds of concrete foundations and and pillars and. I heard that the concrete was made so poorly that you'll find bed springs and bottles and objects within the concrete embedded. The sun's shining. It's a pretty bright morning. We have a lot to do today, a lot to see. We'll even do some metal detecting, see if we can find some, uh, some gold nuggets, man. Peace out.